Welcome friends and welcome to my series of video lectures on design of RCC structures. The topic of this video lecture is introduction to reinforced concrete. For best video quality, watch on laptop or desktop with resolution set to 1080p that is HD. The expected learning outcomes from this video are 1. To define the reinforced concrete and distinguish it from pre-stressed concrete. Second, To appreciate advantages and disadvantages of RCC. Third, To understand various forms and functions of reinforcement. The contents of this video are 1. Definition and brief history of reinforced concrete. Second, Difference between RCC and pre-stressed concrete. Third, common RCC structures. Fourth, advantages and disadvantages of RCC structures. Fifth, forms and functions of reinforcement in RCC. Some key terms are used in this video. RCC, reinforcement, pre-stressed concrete, pavements, moldability, form work, main steel, stirrups, lateral ties. Friends, we have our best friend Smarty here with some tips. While watching this video, write down your own notes. Pause or rewind the video whenever required. Do solve the formative and summative assessment quizzes given in the video. Friends, in this part of video, we will consider the definition, history and comparison of RCC with pre-stressed concrete. Let us first define reinforced cement concrete that is RCC. Reinforced cement concrete RCC is a composite structural material made up of concrete and steel in which concrete is reinforced by embedding passively in it steel bars called reinforcement or rebars. Our conventional understanding is that RCC is made of concrete and steel only. But there are some exceptions also. So there are some non-steel reinforcement materials also. So we can have concrete reinforced with other materials than steel. Modern reinforced concrete can contain varied reinforcement materials made of steel, polymers or alternate composite materials in conjunction with rebars or without rebars. The examples of such concretes are fiber reinforced concrete in which concrete is reinforced by fiber, polymer fibers or glass reinforced concrete in which the concrete is reinforced not by steel but by glass fibers. Now we go a little bit back in the history. It is interesting to note that Francis Coignet was the first to use iron reinforcement concrete or iron reinforced concrete as a technique of constructing building structures. In 1853, Coignet built the first iron reinforced concrete structure, a four story house in the suburbs of Paris. He used iron as reinforcement probably because the st structural steel had not come up till then as his construction material. So he used iron reinforced concrete. Here we see a picture of Francis Coignet. So this was in 1853. Here we see a beautiful shape of concrete structure, RCC structure. This is the structure Expo 1958 Philips Pavilion, Brussels, Belgium. This is an example of novel shape in RCC. Indeed, to have such beautiful shapes, concrete is the only material. That is why the great Italian architect Gio Ponti had excitedly exclaimed that concrete has liberated us from rectangle. So we can have any shapes in concrete because of any shape of shapes of structure because of concrete 
because of the remoldability ability of the concrete. Now look at this bridge. This is actually a pre-stressed concrete bridge. This bridge looks like a our concrete bridge, but we don't know whether it is reinforced as a, an RCC concrete or, or any different type. So there is another very similar material called pre-stressed concrete, which is close to RCC, but it is totally different in its construction and its structural action. But from outside RCC structure and pre-stressed concrete structures, they will look same because finally from outside you will not see the steels inside. You will see only the concrete part. So this bridge which appears to be made up of concrete only, it is actually a pre-stressed concrete bridge. That is why we are just looking at pre-stressed concrete also just as an introduction just to distinguish it from the reinforced concrete RCC. Now pre-stressed concrete that is PSC it is also a composite structural material made up of concrete and steel just like RCC in which now this word is important pre-tensioned steel tendons or cables are embedded in concrete to induce compressive stresses to counteract the tensile stresses developed in the member due to load. So in concrete we are again having steel bars or they are called as tendons or cables and this is a combination again of concrete and steel only. So this is a composite material just like RCC made up of concrete and steel. But here in pre-stressed concrete the role of steel is altogether different than that in RCC or reinforced cement concrete. In the definition of RCC we have used one word that is passive. So the reinforcement of steel bars used in RCC are passively reinforcing RCC or the material. Now in this case, this steel bars, they are actively, you can say, they are actively reinforcing the concrete. What is the meaning of this passive and active? The bars or the tendons or the cables in pre-stressed concrete are pre-tensioned steel tendons. They are already having some tension induced in them and after they start functioning in the member, they oppositely induce compressive stresses in the concrete in order to counteract the tensile stresses developed in the member. Now the theory or the way the steel bars work in pre-stressed concrete are little bit complex and at this point we are not going to study the structural behavior of pre-stressed concrete beams but we just want to distinguish between RCC and pre-stressed concrete and we will say that in RCC the bars are not pre-tensioned but they are pre-tensioned in case of pre-stressed concrete. Why they are pre-tensioned in pre-stressed concrete? Because they want to transfer their tensile force, pre-tension force into compression induced in the concrete to counteract the tensile stresses in the member. So we will just remember that these two materials they are similar in look but they are different. Just to have that is why just be distinguished. Now the typical applications of pre-stressed concrete are high-rise buildings, concrete bridges and dams etc. So in this way we have seen definition a little history bit and uh, the comparison of RCC with pre-stressed concrete just in the at the level of definition. Now in the second part of this video lecture we will see some common RCC structures. Actually the material RCC is itself so common and so popular that the structures made up of RCC are very commonly seen around us. So the first is RCC buildings. Second is RCC pavements or roads. You can see these RCC roads, they are reinforced with the steel reinforcement inside. Then there is a small picture here showing RCC road dividers. You can see this divider, RCC divider 
If this is one side of the road, this is the other side of the road and you see the divider. So on all the highways, you can see these pictures. Now the third is RCC retaining walls. You can see these retaining walls where the walls are meant to retain the earth on one side. So in order to avoid the rock slides or the landslides. So you see such structures in the ghat section, in the hilly sections commonly. Here you can see the wall, concrete wall. Here you can see the base, concrete base. And here you can see the reinforcement bars coming out. These are coming out because this is under construction. This retaining wall is under construction. Now this is a very common picture. This is a RCC water tank ESR. ESR is elevated service reservoir. So that was another RCC structure. Now another common RCC structure is RCC dams. So this is the example or a picture of a typical RCC dam. So in this way, we can see that there are five common RCC structures, buildings, pavements. In pavements come not only the roads, but come runways of the airports also. So pavements, roads, runways, etc., water tanks, retaining walls and dams. In the third section of this video, we will see concrete versus steel structures comparison and functions of reinforcement. We know that apart from RCC or apart from concrete structures, we commonly use steel structures also. So it is worth comparing the two. So let us first of all see the advantages of concrete structures. So here we are keeping in mind that we are comparing concrete structures with steel structures. So the first advantage of concrete as we have seen in the earlier slide that moldability to any shape. You can, you can construct the concrete structures of any beautiful shapes you want. You look at this shape. This is a very common, uh, very beautiful example. So you cannot make this type of shape using steel. So moldability, you can prepare a mold of any shape and you can pour concrete into it. Second is use of low cost materials. We know concrete is made up of cement, uh, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, water and admixtures. All these individual materials are comparatively low cost as compared to the material steel itself. So concrete structures use low cost materials. Third is manufacture for desired strength. You can manufacture concrete on site or you can also manufacture it at a uh, concrete making plant and uh, RMC plant, ready mix concrete plant, but you can manufacture it at desired strength very easily. That is not possible with steel. For you know that the steel has to undergo a lot of manufacturing process in the industry and then you get steel of some particular strength. So it is not possible to have manufacture of steel at of desired strength easily. But for concrete, you can just adjust the proportion of the ingredients of concrete and easily and manufacture the concretes of desired strength. That is the third advantage. Fourth advantage of concrete is it has got good durability. Fifth advantage is it is having relatively less labor cost because you don't require so much of skilled labor as you require in case of steel structures. The sixth advantage is low maintenance, low maintenance cost for concrete structures. Seventh advantage is concrete has good fire and weather resistance as opposed to steel. You know that steel has got poor fire resistance so, and also the weather resistance because of the uh, curse of you can say corrosion. So on that front concrete proves to be superior. It has got good fire and weather resistance and the eighth advantage is good aesthetics. So these are the eight advantages of concrete structures as compared to steel structures. Of course there are some disadvantages or there are some limitations. So Disadvantages of concrete structures. One, brittleness. Cracking and suddenness of failure. We know that steel is a ductile material. 
whereas concrete is a brittle material. The meaning of the word brittle means it breaks without any time lapse or without taking any time, without showing any sign. It breaks suddenly. So suddenness of failure and cracking are the typical characteristics of brittle failure and concrete is a brittle material. Of course, when we reinforce it by steel, the properties of ductile ductility also get added to concrete and it doesn't remain that uh, brittle, but you have to take care of its ductileness or brittleness properly while designing. So then the second disadvantage is it demands strict quality control on the side. So the manufacture of desired strength, this is one, one side the advantage on the other side. Since there is a freedom of manufacturing concrete of any desired strength, there is a risk that your quality control can has to be strict. Second, third thing is it requires form work. Concrete as we know, we prepare molds and then we pour wet concrete into it. This is what we know from the concrete technology. So in order to pour those uh, that concrete, wet concrete, which is fluid, which is not hardened, so in order to hold that concrete in proper shape, we have to erect a separate structure which we call as formwork or scaffolding structure in order to pour the concrete. So it requires a formwork and then so you have to prepare a pre-structure, you have to construct a pre-structure and then you have to pour concrete into it. So that requirement of formwork is additional construction of its additional structure. This is not the case with steel structures. So fourth disadvantage is long curing time. Maximum strength after 28 days. You know that concrete doesn't attain its full strength easily and quickly. It requires constant supply of water or moisture or wetness from outside. That is what we call as curing. And this has to continue for 28 days and then concrete attains its maximum strength after 28 days of curing. So this is a long curing time and long time to attain full strength. This is not the case with steel. Steel, what, how, the way you bring it on the, in the structure or in the, on the side, it is having its full strength available. The fifth disadvantage is low strength to weight ratio. So concrete has got low leg strength to weight ratio. That means this is compared as compared with steel. The meaning of this strength to weight ratio is that if you construct a component made up of concrete and made up of steel, then the for the same strength, a concrete component will be bulky, will be big in size, whereas the steel component will be slim or small in size. So you require a bigger size for the same strength. That is why concrete structure is bulky with high self-weight. Since it becomes bulky, automatically its self-weight is also more and that is a disadvantage of concrete. It, it, has to, it has to spend major part or main as a large part of its strength in bearing its own self-weight due to low strength to weight ratio. Then the sixth disadvantage of concrete structures is cracking due to drying shrinkage and moisture expansion and that is why construction joints are required in concrete structures. So the property of concrete, one of the properties is shrinkage and that is why cracking occurs in concrete, shrinkage cracks occur in concrete, moisture expansion occurs in concrete and that is why the construction joints are required to be provided in concrete structures. The seventh disadvantage is creep. Due to sustained loads, you get some additional stresses developed and some permanent deformations occur in concrete. So this is another property of concrete, uh, which is a, we can say a disadvantage of concrete structures over steel structures. So here we had a brief uh, explanation about advantages and disadvantages of concrete structures as compared to steel structures. Now this picture of reinforcement is very common to us. Let us see what are the functions of reinforcement in concrete. We have seen, we have defined RCC as concrete having steel bars in it. 
so what are what is the function of those tail bars or the reinforcement or the rebars there are three functions one to compensate weakness of concrete in tension this is a very important and the most fundamental function of reinforcement in concrete or in rcc what is it it is to compensate weakness of concrete in tension we know that a structure is made up of various structural components and due to load these different structural components behave in different way sometimes there will be tension developed sometimes there will be compression developed some members will be flexural members some members will be torsional members some members will be subjected to shear so all these basic structural actions will finally cause tension and compression tensile and compressive stresses this is true with any structure whatever material you use the structural members due to the loads will behave in their own way whether it is steel structure or rcc structure then if concrete is the material you are using then that concrete should resist all those types of stresses that are developed in the structure whether it is tension or compression but now concrete has an inherent drawback its original drawback is that it is weak in tension its compressive strength is less it's not very means not a zero but it has got very poor uh, tensile strength i'm sorry it is poor in tension and that is why we are using steel bars we are using steel bars wherever we find that there is tension developed in a member so the first function of reinforcement is to compensate weakness of concrete in tension so tension zones and shear zones in members are to be identified suppose you are designing a slab or you are designing a beam or a footing or whatever structural component you are designing you have to identify the zones in that particular member where tension will be developed so tension and shear zones are required to be reinforced for resisting tension now the second function of reinforcement in rcc is to assist concrete in resisting compression though concrete is weak in tension it is not weak in compression so it can resist its own compression but we know that steel has got compressive strength as well as steel tensile strength both the strengths are available so anyway you are using steel in the structure so why not use it to resist some compression also to assist concrete in resisting compression so this is the second function of reinforcement in rcc to assist concrete in resisting compression and the examples of the steel bars resisting compression look here this is the steel column and column so all these vertical bars they are the main reinforcement of the column and they are resisting compression so the example is columns second example is doubly reinforced beams which we see, we shall see later on so in this the steel bars are assisting concrete to resisting to resist compression now the third role or third function of reinforcement in rcc is to offer ductility to structure to improve earthquake resistance as we discussed right now the brittleness of concrete is a disadvantage of concrete but when we are uh, reinforcing with a ductile material like steel the entire rcc member when it acts uh, as a composite member it its ductility gets improved and that is why the reinforcement offers ductility to structure and this ductility of the structure improves its earthquake resistance so in this way there are three functions of reinforcement in rcc to compensate weakness of concrete in tension to assist concrete in compression and to offer ductility friends in the fourth and the last section of this video lecture we will see forms and functions of reinforcement in a building structure because the building structure is a common structure we will see the various forms of reinforcement and function of that reinforcement in a building structure we have tabulated these 
the various forms of reinforcement in a building structure we know that a building structure usually has four major components structural components slab beam column footing and the fifth is staircase there are five major components so every building is made up of these five major structural components now we will see one by one let us look at slab let us consider slab we are right now talking about a one way slab we will understand the detailed meaning of one way slab and all those things in the greater detail in the next videos but right now we will consider a slab so in a slab we get reinforcement in two forms main steel and distribution steel the bars are called as main steel and distribution steel let us look at this familiar picture this is a slab panel a plate like panel okay a slab makes the floors of the buildings so this is a panel here you see the beams which are the supporting beams and on this beam this is the plate like member which is the slab and you see this various bar steel bar spread okay when the concreting will be done and the concrete will harden you will not see any such bars you will see only concrete but you know that inside that there are steel bars so this is the reinforcement mesh like this bars running in this direction bars perpendicular to this direction now this is a typical reinforcement detailing of a slab okay now in this slab the bars which are which are going into the beam you can see the, here you are having the beams so these bars which are going into the beams they are called as main steel bars they are called as main steel bars and the bars which are perpendicular to these bars the main steel bars they are called as distribution steel bars there are two bars two types of bars in slab they are called as distribution steel and main steel because their functions are different uh, in the look they will look similar they will look uh, just like bars for a person on the construction side they don't make any difference but for a designer they definitely make difference now we can see in this detailing this is the detailing of this corner you can see or this part here you can see this is the beam running which is this beam concrete beam these are the beam bars you can see beam bars now these are the slab bars okay now these bars they are which are running like this they are the distribution steel bars as we see right now and these bars which are running in this direction they are main steel bars now if you observe carefully first bar is the bar comes like this and it is bent up and it is going ahead right now if you look at the second bar it is going straight into the beam right so first bar is you can see bent up whereas the second bar is straight now the third bar is again bent up the fourth bar is straight so like this you get alternate bent main bars so main bars of slab they are alternately bent over the beam on which they are supported okay so this is the typical uh, reinforcement detailing and we will be studying all the details on calculations in the topic of slabs later on but the slab reinforcement in at this point let us remember that slab reinforcement is in two forms main steel and distribution steel main steel is the steel bars which are which are passing to the beams which are going inside the beams whereas the distribution steel are the bars which are perpendicular to these main steel bars there are no beams here so they are perpendicular to the main steel bars what are the functions the main steel it is called main because it is having the function of resisting flexural tension so we saw in the last slide the function of primary function of reinforcement is to resist tension in concrete so this main steel is used to resist flexural tension flexural tension means the tension arising due to the action of flexure that is bending and the distribution steel its function is to to keep these main bars these main bars in position in position means their spacing will get disturbed if they are not tied 
in this transverse direction and the that is why that is what is the function main function of distribution steel now we move to the reinforcement of beams look at beams this is a very common picture you can see this is one beam a beam going along the length like this you see that a beam is a long member as opposed to the slab slab is a plate like area dominant member aerial member you can say and whereas this is a long member having relatively small cross section now a beam has got three forms of reinforcement one is called main steel second is called anchor bars third is called shear stirrups these bottom bars are shown here these are the bottom bars now in this particular beam we can say that these bottom bars are main bars you can say in some typical types of beams so bottom bars of the main bars these are the top bars now sometimes the top bars may be main bars and bottom bars may be anchor bars so there are some bottom bars there are some top bars and there are some rings you can see these rings these rings are called as shear stirrups the arrows are pointing so these are shear stirrups they are called as shear stirrups so there are three types of bars in the beam bottom bars top bars and shear stirrups okay now the top bars can act as main steel when they are used to resist flexural tension just like slabs the other bars if the bottom bars are the main bars then the top bars are called as anchor bars their role is to support the shear stirrups what are shear stirrups shear stirrups are the rings of steel running all over the length of the beam their function is to resist diagonal tension due to shear diagonal tension due to shear at this moment these words may be new to you or these you may not understand full meaning of these words but just uh, hold for some days and you will we will be studying the topic of shear stirrups and there you will understand the whole thing right now let us just know that there are three forms of reinforcement in beams now the third is a staircase now whatever this type of staircase that you see is a dog legged stair you know that staircases are of various types this itself is a very big chapter here we are looking at a very common and simple uh, staircase that is a dog legged stair it is having one flight like this the other flight like this and a common landing right you can see this common landing here you see a constructed uh, staircase whereas here you see a staircase under construction where the reinforcement steel bars are shown okay now <coughs> there is a joint called as caesar joint caesar joint so this looks like a cross that is a caesar and the bars this is a typical joint in case of a dog leg stair so we have to remember that this is a caesar joint which is a typical Uh, arrangement of reinforcement bars in the dog leg staircase we will understand its function and everything later on we will study the topic when we will study the topic of staircase so you can see this this bar is going like this and bent like this the other bar is coming like this and bent like this so the two bars are making a cross and this cross is a caesar joint looks like a caesar a pair of blades is a caesar so this is a typical staircase and in staircase you are having a main steel and distribution steel and a caesar joint okay so that was the third type now we move for columns and footings we combine the two because they are very closely connected now i am showing this in this uh, pictures to you because uh, even though we have not studied all these components in detail we see all these your reinforcement forms on the site whenever we visit commonly so whenever we will be visiting the sites it will be better if you can just identify and name these components later on we can study how to design them so this is just to make you acquainted with it now we look at columns and footings you know that a vertical component compression member on which beams are supported the column is a vertical compression member on which 
horizontal beams are supported. Now, this column is resting on the ground or on the foundation stratum and between the column and the foundation stratum there is a small structure called as footing or a foundation. Okay, So, these are two different structural components. So, this you can see the column reinforcement, vertical column reinforcement. So, a column is having two types of reinforcements. If you look here, this is a vertical column. You can see these rings. These rings are similar to shear stirrups in case of beams. So, these rings, they are looking like shear stirrups. But this is a common mistake usually uh, committed that these rings are wrongly, these rings are called as shear stirrups in columns also. So they are not called shear stirrups in columns. They are called as lateral ties in columns. So, we have to remember this term clearly, lateral ties in columns. So, these are the rings and these vertical bars are the main bars in column. These main bars are also called as longitudinal stay. Longitudinal means acting or working or the uh, aligned along the length of the column, along the length of the column. So, longitudinal steel or the main steel of column. So, these are the main steel or longitudinal steel bars. So, a column, you can see here, a column will consist of longitudinal or main steel. Okay, there are two names to it. So, main bars of column, you can see these vertical bars. And second is transverse steel or lateral ties. These are the lateral ties. These are the rings made up of steel. Now, these are the lateral ties and they are also called as transverse steel. The meaning of the word transverse as you know is the direction perpendicular to the longitudinal direction that is perpendicular to the length. So, vertical along the length bars and perpendicular across the length or transverse bars. So, column A consisting of two types of reinforcement. The function of longitudinal or main reinforcement is to resist compression. We saw in the last slide that uh, reinforce also uh, assists or helps concrete in resisting compression. And the example is of a column. So, we are here we are talking about an axially loaded column. So, to resist compression, we use the main bars. And what is the function of these lateral ties? The function is to keep the main steel in position. So, to keep the bars in position, you have to provide another set of bars and tie them to each other so that they don't move from each other during the process of concreting. Okay. Now, the last component is the footing. So, this is the footing as you can see. Now, footing, of course, there is no concrete shown. We are just seeing the reinforcement. As when we pour the concrete, you will not see this reinforcement. So, in footing, we get the steel reinforcement in the form of main steel in mesh. Mesh means a network of uh, mutually perpendicular bars, you can see. These bars like this and perpendicular bars like this. So, this is like a matting or a mat uh, made up of steel bars mutually perpendicular. So, these, this mesh is a typical characteristic or typical look of the reinforcement in footings. Now, the main function of these uh, um, mesh bars is to resist flexural tension in footing. Both of them are serving the purpose of resisting functional uh, flexural tension and they are holding each other in proper position also. So, they play the role of distribution steel as in slab also. So, in short, now we can say that a building structure has got five main components, slab, beam, column, footing and staircase and they are having reinforcement in these various forms and the functions of those reinforcement forms are like this and this is the picture which we see. Friends, as usual, before we conclude this video, we have to have a formative self-evaluation. So, pause the video at this point and write on the paper the answers of the following questions. The first question is, define reinforced concrete and distinguish it from pre-stressed concrete. Second question is, 
enlist common RCC structures and state their functions. Both of these questions are of U type means understanding level questions. Now the third question is, this is an application level question. Visit a construction site and take photographs of the various forms of reinforcement discussed in this video lecture. Just in the earlier slide, we have seen photographs of various types of reinforcements. Now you just physically visit a site and there you identify these situations and these various forms of reinforcement. Take the photographs, label them. So that will be a very good exercise uh, and an interesting exercise for you. So if you have gone through these questions thoroughly, we can continue for the for this video. So friends, we now come to the end of this video lecture. Introduction to reinforced concrete. Let us sum up. We started with the expected learning outcomes from this video as 1. To define the reinforced concrete and distinguish it from pre-stressed concrete. Second, to appreciate advantages and disadvantages of RCC. Third, to understand various forms and functions of reinforcement. In the course of the video, we came across some key terms. So, RCC, reinforcement, pre-stressed concrete, pavements, moldability, form work, main steel, stirrups, lateral ties. So these are some of the key terms used in the video. If you just recollect the meanings of these words only and try to understand their context, then you will be able to consolidate in your mind the entire video lecture and it will be very nice for you to understand and retain the benefits of this lecture. Contact your teacher for any doubts and queries. Summative assessment quiz is provided as usual for this video also in the form of Google quiz. So do solve this assessment quiz. And now at the end, here is Smarty for us to thank. So thanks all for watching this video and goodbye till we meet in the next video.